So I'm a lifelong PlayStation gamer, starting all the way from the PS1 up to the PS5. And despite knowing the Halo games popularity, I never really got a chance to play them until now. With Bethesda games like Starfield becoming Xbox exclusives, I finally decided it was time to get an Xbox and also Game Pass. This has led to me downloading the Master Chief Collection, which has given me the first look at the Halo games, starting with Halo Combat Evolved. As I've dived into this game, it's really shown me the profound influence that the Halo series has on first-person shooters in general. The gameplay elements, which are now staples in first-person shooter games, clearly have been in some way inspired by Halo and just exploring this universe in this pioneering series has just been a fantastic experience. Punch it. Ah, sir. The gameplay of Halo Combat Evolved immediately struck me with just how fluid and tight the mechanics felt. The innovative approach for the time of limiting the player to only having two weapons instead of having you know a whole arsenal in your weapon wheel felt to me like it added a real tactical layer to the combat. This system where each gun serves a distinct purpose in various combat scenarios encouraged strategic thinking when I was playing beyond mere just run and gun tactics. I played the campaign initially on heroic difficulty and at the start I struggled finding the right weapon to use, especially given that your primary weapon is essentially a pea shooter. The assault rifle really in this game is more of an SMG. My assumption is that it would function similar to assault rifles in other games, which was not the case. And it took some time for me to understand the significance of the Magnum as the primary weapon and to realise that each weapon, including the assault rifle, which seemingly was useless initially, had its purpose for specific enemies. This realisation was a game changer and it really enhanced my opinions on Halo when I worked out each weapon's quirks. The first level, which is called the Pillar of Autumn, aligned with my initial expectations of a classic first-person shooter reminiscent of the era. It's set in the tight quarters of a spaceship with close quarter combat, which immediately evoked memories for me of similar games I played around the time, not necessarily on the Xbox, but on the GameCube. I was a massive fan of the 007 James Bond series, and I know it's no comparison to Halo, this game evoked similar feelings that that game did back in the day. This familiarity in design provided a comfortable entry for me when I started playing this level. Combining elements of nostalgia along with the polished tight gameplay that Halo was known for. It was a good way to ease into the Halo experience, but so far I didn't really feel anything that was amazing me, but that changed very quick. Sure you wouldn't rather take a seat? We'll be fine. The transition from the Pillar of Autumn to the second level, which is aptly named Halo, is a significant shift in environment and gameplay. From the confined corridors of the burning spaceship, you then find yourself a crash landing on this namesake world of Halo. The change of setting is striking. The game now opens up into vast open landscapes, which contrasts quite sharply with the previous level, which had quite narrow confines. And this vastness introduces a, a new dimension into the gameplay. That was when I finally got it. I started to realise why Halo was such a marvel back in 2004. After the initial task of rescuing the Marines and surviving against the Covenant onslaught, the game basically allows you to choose your path. To me this feels incredibly advanced for its time and it feels almost like a precursor to some of the games I've played in the open world genre. The inclusion of the Warthog, which was a joy to drive around, emphasises just how much this level had a real sandbox nature. Teaming up with the Marines who could assist as machine gunners on the Warthog was just so much fun. Like I really cared about those Marines. The ability to switch between being the driver, being the gunner, 
added some strategic depth. You can leave the Warthog whenever you want, unlike some Unreal's vehicle levels, which I've played in other games. My goal in this level was to protect the Marines and ensure their safe evacuation, which became especially challenging actually and rewarding on legendary difficulty on my second playthrough. And I'm proud to say that not one Marine was left behind. When all of those Marines got on the Pelican, I felt like I had done my duty to the USMC. So I've actually been delving into the Halo novels at the same time that I've been playing the game. I really enjoy delving into new universes. I just love the world building of this series. Reading those books alongside playing the game gave me a deeper perspective on Master Chief. You could be forgiven for thinking of him as a faceless, one-dimensional mercenary, but the book revealed some layers to his character that weren't immediately apparent to me from the game. Master Chief was portrayed in the first book that I read as a real protector of his fellow Marines. He felt responsible for their well-being and I felt that reading these books enhanced my immersion in the game, allowing me to embody Master Chief's role as a guardian for his fellow Marines who were at a clear disadvantage to the Covenant Good forces. To you, sir. Can use Welcome help, to the sir. party. It's a mess, sir. We're scattered all over this valley. We called for evac, but until you showed up, I thought we were cooked. Don't worry, Sergeant. When we're dropped into the third level, which is the mountainous region in Truth and Reconciliation, I was really thrilled to use a sniper rifle for the first time, and the satisfaction of landing headshots, coupled with the option to sneak through the level or go guns blazing if you really wish, made the gameplay quite dynamic and engaging. The level's ambience was heightened by this fantastic soundtrack, especially during the cliffside sniping moment. The level's difficulty on Legendary was a significant challenge for me. The section aboard the Covenant ship with its endless purple corridors and that first encounter with the several invisible elites wielding swords, that was particularly grueling for me. It was like a mix of strategy and sheer luck that I managed to get through that level. It was also in this level that I discovered the plasma pistol, which became eventually my favourite weapon in the game. That gun was a game changer for me, like the charged shot which you can use to eliminate shields, followed by the magnum headshot made even the toughest elite seemingly quite easy after I discovered this. The plasma pistol proved to be quite an invaluable tool against all types of enemies, which is what I realized by the end of the game, and that significantly altered my combat strategy. Time for a little payback. The next level, Silent Cartographer, stands out for me as the quintessential Halo experience, which mirrors the open world freedom of the second level, Halo. The level begins with that thrilling beach landing. This introduction sets a badass tone for me going into this level. What I particularly loved about the Silent Cartographer was the blend of open world exploration, but then also having that vehicle gameplay with the intense uh, close quarter combat within the structures on the island. The level gives you quite a lot of freedom to choose what direction you take when you're traveling around the island and offers quite a balanced mix of outdoor encounters and then also the tight indoor skirmishes. This duality makes it quite a ideal mission to showcase what Halo is about and indeed I think this mission became the demo for Halo Combat Evolved back in the day and I can see why. The level's design also features some memorable almost boss encounters and a descent into the depths of the island adding layers to the gameplay. It's a close call but Silent Cartographer for me might just edge out Halo for being my favourite mission in the game. It seems to me like it is the definitive level to demonstrate the game's essence. It's a perfect vertical slice of what Halo offers. Look on the bright side, Phil Hammer. 
The last thing the Covenant will expect is an aerial insertion from underground. So, Attack on the Control Room was a tale of two halves for me, I think. The first part impressed me with its expansive open areas and the introduction of the new vehicles such as the tanks um, and the Covenant Ghosts. I find myself favouring the Ghosts for their agile movement and the added layer of protection that they offered as they come with their own health bar unlike the tanks which I find to be somewhat cumbersome and inaccurate. This level also gave you the freedom to choose between the two vehicles, which I appreciate it. However, I felt that the second half of the level became a bit repetitive, and it felt to me like it just had 10 identical rooms, one after each other. While the enemy types did vary, making each encounter sort of distinct, I did feel by the end of it that there was um, environmental monotony, which was quite noticeable. Playing on legendary difficulty, this was even more pronounced, with the length of time it took me to complete each room. And by the end of this level, I felt like I had pretty much grasped the strengths and weaknesses of each weapon and each enemy type. I had a better understanding of what weapons were most effective against each enemy. Nice. But just as I was getting comfortable with those gameplay mechanics, 343 Guilty Spark threw me quite a curveball. It's set in this um, foggy swamp and it immediately gives off this distinct different tone from the previous levels in the game. The descent into the darkness of the ancient base leads to a pivotal moment in the game which is the discovery of the Flood. And this revelation completely upends the established gameplay mechanics that you've come to expect from the first half of the game. The Flood with their relentless, aggressive behaviour forced me to rethink my approach to which weapons I was going to use. Unlike the Covenant who may take a defensive stance when their health is low, the Flood are just relentless and the Flood continually charge at you. This was initially terrifying but it gave a well needed change of pace I think by that point in the story, especially after the lengthy attack in the control room level. The introduction of the Flood added a new layer of urgency and challenge to the game, shifting the dynamic from strategic combat to just survival against the unyielding horde. And just when you think it can't get any worse, okay, the Flood can use weapons now, and they can use rocket launchers. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> 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 so the library is arguably the most divisive level in Halo and for me it also ranks as my least favourite. I don't think I'm treading any new ground here. This isn't a radical opinion. While some players prefer its Doom-like relentless combat against the Flood. I just felt that it was more tedious than thrilling to be honest. I quickly discovered the most effective strategy against the Flood which was to wait around corners with a shotgun and this method made most of the encounters fairly manageable but the level's length was just its biggest drawback. It did feel excessively long and it had repeated assets across all four floors, four floors and despite some variations in gameplay on each floor, the overall experience for me was just a slog. It felt like I was just continually clearing the flood from the same areas, facing wave after wave in each hallway. By the end of this mission I was just completely done with the flood and I was ready to move on. The next level, Two Betrayals, essentially is the attack in the control room level but in reverse. It's a design choice that I found sort of underwhelming. While the vehicle gameplay was still enjoyable and the reversed level did give some new gameplay experiences, I just couldn't check off like a sense of the laziness of the design in some way. I know they were short of time when they were releasing this game and that's probably the reason. And even though I was aware of that, it didn't fully alleviate my feeling of disappointment with this level, especially when revisiting the monotonous grey rooms which are the same ones from Attack on the Control Room. One aspect I did enjoy was utilising the Banshees, primarily because they let me bypass half the level. There's a particular section in this level where you're expected to ascend to a higher part of the level, typically by fighting through enemies and destroying the tanks. I found a workaround to just use the Ghost to bypass all of this, then I seized a Banshee and then flew directly to my objective. Bye bye! Bye! Bye bye! 
The variety of enemy types in this level was pretty impressive. This time you had the Covenant with their defensive and tactical approach, but then you also had the Flood, which had a totally different method of attacking you. And then adding to the mix were the Sentinel robots, which main tactic just seemed to be be annoying, but this combination of enemy types kept me constantly alert and engaged. Each enemy required a different strategy to defeat, which did add some depth to the level and made the combat much more dynamic. Oh brother, this guy stinks! The keys level in Halo, while significant in the story, didn't leave a lasting impression on me really. Much like two portrayals, the proportions of this level which were just a reversal of previous levels, especially when you returned to the Covenant ship. However, the inclusion of the Flood really changed this up for me. It added a layer of challenge and variety which wasn't present the first time around. However, the level's layout didn't really stand out for me particularly. What did leave a profound impact on me was the narrative twist involving Captain Keys. So in the Halo books, Captain Keys is one of my favourite characters. Witnessing his fate in game was both shocking and also quite emotionally charged. It was a stark reminder of the stakes in this game's story and it served as quite a crucial plot point. So the moment was quite a narrative highlight which contrasted with the otherwise familiar gameplay of the level. The Maw, which is the final level of the game, again has this idea of reversing the first mission in the game, which does give it sort of a romantic ending in a way, you know, like full circle storytelling. While it might have been influenced again by crunch and time constraints, I feel like this does give a thrilling finale, especially with the Warthog section at the end. The Warthog escape sequence, which is just filled with explosions and chaos and adrenaline was quite a highlight of the story for me and was just good old-fashioned fun. Reading the books really deepened the experience for me, especially at the end here where Master Chief along with a few survivors make it off the ring. Unlike many other series where quite a lot of the main characters have plot armour, this sort of gives me a sense of a real existential threat to humanity, which makes the Covenant a more terrifying enemy. The campaign's replayability is also a real strong point for me, especially with the Master Chief Collection as it gives quite a few different ways to play the campaign, including challenges like finding skulls or achieving the part-time and the par score. It's rare to play a game which almost feels life-changing, but this sort of fits the bill for me. It's not really just a game, it's sort of a, a gateway into another world. Sort of similar to the deep world of Star Wars for me when I discovered it, the prospect of exploring more of the Halo universe really excites me. Overall, while there were parts of the story which I felt were rehashed in some capacity, this game sort of reignited my love for first person shooters. It defied my expectations of a normal first person shooter campaign. Normally these campaigns almost feel like a prelude or an add-on to the multiplayer modes, at least from the games I played growing up, but instead with this game Halo has a fully realised world and you can see the game's lasting impact on the first person shooter genre. It's a game that really leaves a footprint. Halo, it's finished. No, I think we're just getting started. So playing the Master Chief Collection I experienced both the original and the remastered graphics. Surprisingly I found a stronger connection with the original graphics, and especially with the soundtrack. There's a certain nostalgia evoked by the game's original aesthetics, from the sound of the weapons to the sound of Master Chief's footsteps, which I felt the remastered version couldn't really replicate. The soundtrack with its digital choir and digital guitar tones quite reminiscent of the 90s and early 2000s had quite a unique charm which I felt was lost in the new soundtrack. And the original graphics with their moody ambience gave a sort of a creepy immersive atmosphere. The new visuals are quite polished 
but I feel like they lose the essence of the original game. And the music is just exceptional. Of course, there's the iconic theme. My personal favorite though was A Walk in the Woods. For me, that perfectly exemplifies the game's masterful soundtrack. It appears at just the right moments when you're least expecting it, and it doesn't really overstay its welcome. Many games have constant soundtracks, but with Halo, I feel like they knew when to let the silence speak. This allows for some creepy moments where you can hear the Covenant in the background breathing in the ambience, and then sometimes the music will come in and give you that feeling of uh, empowerment and you will feel in the zone during the combat. I just feel like that balance between the silence and then the music coming in is just masterfully executed. And of course, who could forget about the multiplayer mode in Halo? It really set a standard for a lot of games to follow. I quickly realized that the assault rifle, again, is just not effective and I found that the Magnum is the weapon of choice also in the multiplayer. The variety and design of the maps, particularly the open ones which had a lot of vehicle use, greatly enhanced the experience for me. I really did enjoy the diversity of the game modes uh, with Capture the Flag and King of the Hill. The Capture the Flag mode gave me really good memories of playing 007 Nightfire growing up. It also had a Capture the Flag mode um, and I remember the map Skyrail being particularly great in that game and this yeah gave me those same feelings of capturing the flag and being on edge as you try and bring it back to your base. What I do find most appealing about the Halo multiplayer is the simplicity of it, but also the depth of it. It doesn't have a complex ranking system, but what it does have is a focus on mastering the game's nuances. This includes understanding each weapon's correct range for use, and also learning the map layouts, and pinpointing optimal equipment spawns, and knowing which guns allow for faster camouflage resets. It's all about mastering a seemingly simple but intricately deep game. When you look at recent games like Modern Warfare 3, where the experience can feel sort of cluttered with convoluted menus and overwhelming weapon choices and an excess of maps. I feel like Halo's approach to having fewer maps but having a real high skill ceiling that can be mastered is something I find much more engaging. The gameplay is quite methodical with focus on landing headshots and it demands a level of mastery which is quite engaging and rewarding. So overall my dive into Halo Combat Evolved has been immersive and quite a transformative gaming experience for me. The distinct arsenal of weapons, each with their distinct use, has profoundly influenced the tactical depth of the combat. The original version's ambience and music with with its nostalgic and atmospheric tones significantly enriched the gameplay for me in comparison to the remastered version and it made it much more memorable. It's a real blend of engaging narrative with diverse levels and a real innovative multiplayer which reshaped the expectations of first person shooters. The game stands out to me not just as a set of missions but also an introduction into quite a diverse universe. It's a journey now which has deeply impacted my gaming preferences going Going forward and it's one that I'll probably continue to enjoy and explore for many years. Thanks for joining me today in my gaming retreat. I want this to be a warm welcoming place where we can enjoy our favourite beverage and talk about our favourite video games. If you've enjoyed yourself feel free to stick around. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Halo in the comments and if it has left as big an impression on you as it has on me. You're welcome anytime.